So this is Don Moody of HandymanReality.com of Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, for a landlord, I maintain a lot of the plumbing and in, in, interior uh, uh, fixtures inside the, this property. And what we found was is during a couple of rainstorms this year, we'd had water coming into the basement. So we had two different choices of how to fix that. Um, and one was to open up the interior walls and find the cracks and eject them. Um, and the other one was to come to the exterior, excavate three to four feet away from the house uh, and uh, find out if there was good grade, good clay, dig down till we got good clay and uh, find any cracks, dig down to the foundation level the very bottom of the floor for any cracks and once we found the cracks then we needed to uh, uh, prepare them and uh, inject them so this is a quick kind of an overview of me fixing a, a basement leak and in an effort to get a 20-year fix so what I've done is I took my grinder and ground all the way up and down the crack to give myself a V shape and then as my own little signature move I took my uh, grinder and I uh, ground in on a high angle some slices and uh, the whole idea of the V is to give me something for a mortar uh, cement fix to hang on to some more area for it to stick to, kind of like glue. I don't really like the glue uh, idea thing. So I use the high angle with my uh, uh, cement, my general purpose cement blade. And uh, I cut in slices that uh, when I push the mortar in, it will, uh, and it sets, it will keep it sort of gripped in. Um, so once I've prepared the V shape, what I've done is, is about every six inches, four to six inches, I've marked off where I would uh, drill a hole. So, uh, and as I'm drilling, you see me move my drill a bit. And what I'm doing is, is as I'm moving the drill, is I'm fishing for the crack, to follow the crack as best I can. Uh, what I want to do in the uh, in the end is uh, after I've drilled these every four to six inches all the way to the bottom then uh, I'm going to take this Sika crack repair kit uh, now it doesn't actually do the drilling it doesn't even ask for it that's again that's a me thing uh, I know that a cement wall is 4 to 10 inches thick in Alberta, so I drill in 3 to 4 inches to make sure that when I inject this stuff, this is an expanding foam sealant, uh, that when I inject this, that it uh, gets right to the center of the wall and fills the crack completely as much as possible. And uh, so how this is done is like I say the holes are drilled every so often and then these come with a little plastic fork uh, that has a plug with it as well so uh, the ports are intended to uh, you remember that hole I just drilled well the port goes in there like that now, uh, I use a uh, another sick sick of product which is generally for installing anchors like uh, rebar. I had to cut some patio out of here. This is where there's some rebar spall, some spalling where the rebar was. We'll also patch that with a mortar. Uh, so this is a fast curing anchor adhesive uh, because, well, time is money. <laughs> oh, I put it inside. So I break off the, 
the plug. And then uh, I take and I uh, squeeze this fast curing uh, anchor adhesive. Hopefully it hasn't already cured the end of my brush. I made a video, but you know, it kind of screwed up. <laughs> so I'm starting over. It's just a real drag. I should have brought a second person. Now here I am doing all this embarrassing stuff right in front of you. Wow, that stuff really is uh, fast setting. And off. Breaking it off back here. I'm going to end up changing tips together because you see this is two parts in here and it mixes as it goes you see the swirl marks so I guess I don't even dawdle for a moment thankfully they give us multiple tips uh, so before I put these in uh, and when I drill anything I also uh, take my vacuum Clean out my crack and clean out my drilling, the holes where I drilled, because dust and things like that will stop things from adhering. Now we'll go back to uh, installing the injector plugs into the holes that I drilled. Now because I'm going to be injecting the foam through there, I don't want to get the end plugged at all. And this stuff sets fast, like minutes, sort of thing. So don't really have any time to dawdle. And if anything, I maybe should have had all my plugs ready to go. Because as it mixes, the timer starts. talk about this old gas line I'm sort of leaning or sitting on after uh, I've got the plugs in. This stuff is starting to harden on me already. This is really sucking. Stop it. 
Folks, gotta hustle. some of that later. So there's my injector ports. Injected. And while well, they uh, cure a bit, a bit I will uh, uh, start mixing up some mortar it's gonna fill this uh, E groove that I've made all the way up and down and uh, then I'm gonna take lunch because that'll need an hour to set before uh, uh, I'll be able to actually do the injecting when I do the injecting I need that, uh, that mortar in this crack here to stop the foam from coming out. So, like I say, I have this fast setting cement that comes in the kit. You can buy additional tubes as well, and I picked this up from uh, Home Depot. Um, I suggest if you're going to do the drilling method that you buy extra drill bits. Because if they get caught on a stone or anything, they can uh, uh, turn around and uh, uh, they can turn around and uh, uh, stop uh, uh, break your bit kind of thing. Now you see one side is black, one side is cream colored. I doubt it's going to be any good, but ah, just in case, I'll use the cap and I'll see if I can get new tips. Everything. So, before I uh, put the mortar in, once the injection ports are sealed a bit, I will be wetting the wall. 
And uh, after I finished it all, and I've even mortared over the ports, I'll be taking and I'll be painting the surface for it's three feet all the way down. I'll be sealing the whole wall with this Zypex, uh, uh, which is a cementious product that actually crystallizes inside the pores and everything in the cement. Uh, my effort there is, is to keep any moisture whatsoever from getting near that crack and getting into that crack. Because in Alberta, we get very deep freezes and water, when it freezes, it expands, what, 1.4 times the... So it expands and it opens these cracks. So we want to do everything we can to uh, ensure that any crack is painted over with a Zypex. Uh, and we'll do the same thing over any of these uh, patches. Uh, because we'll want to uh, prevent any moisture from getting behind the patch to push it out. So this has been Don Moody of HandymanReality.com. I'm going to do my best to pause the video and come back later when I do the injection thing. But just in case it's in two parts, I told you who I am. <laughs>
ensure that you've first sloped everything with clay so that it will wash water, it will make the water run away from the wall. Water doesn't tend to go through clay, but if you, uh, 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 if you uh, water a plant ever, you'll see when you pour plant in the water in the pot that uh, uh, the water goes straight through black soil. So having a foot or so of black soil up against the house was just allowing water to pool up against the house. We dug it out to find any cracks to ensure that there were no sinkholes underneath at all. Uh, washed away by water. Uh, had there have been, uh, say, had we had hit groundwater or anything like that, crazy like that, we would have dug right down and put in a full weeping tile system. Age of the house, it it might have one, it just might not be working well. Uh, but what we did was is we dug down to the clay. Again, you see on this side, it's a light brown. On that side, you can just see the line of the brown. And then there's still some dirty soil sitting on top. Uh, but that is clay. So we're going to get rid of that black dirt over there. And uh, we're going to fill that with clay. We're going to shape it for four feet out of the uh, away from the house, uh, and then on top of that, we will put soil, and uh, then we'll uh, put sod. I never recommend planters against a house because that'll just keep water up against the house. You can see uh, on the patio here. I actually cut out a big chunk of uh, of patio clear more space to allow us to grade it out and very likely I'm going to put a drain line that runs along there uh, to uh, give it something that it can collect water and push it away from the cement and drive it over towards the lawn. Um, you can see the cement pad here how it's been dropping down you see the line. This is uh, one of the big things that caused our concern and got us investigating even further. And uh, if you look, way down in there, maybe I can find another spot where you can see it. On the end there is one, which I've covered up with a stake. There is a uh, rebar that goes into the, the cement wall. So that should have held the pad up, and for some reason, the pad is sinking. Uh, we've confirmed that uh, it is all clay under the pad. So uh, it's got to be, uh, in my opinion, water collecting against that wall and uh, uh, running down the edge there. Along this edge, I'll actually seal this crack. Uh, to ensure that no water is going down there and uh, yeah so big thing was is the call before you dig or click before you dig nowadays and they'll put markers and they'll use paint uh, if you run into old gas lines in my opinion it's best not to disturb them I had some guy actually suggest that we cut them out so we could continue with the machine kind of makes me nervous because I don't I, I'm a little bit of a control freak I haven't seen the other end of the line I've seen the side in the house I prefer just to leave it alone uh, now the other markings there's more markings than just gas for a house there's going to be the sewer and uh, the water so you're going to find uh, different colored flags for those and you see the uh, the green flag and the uh, blue flag. Uh, they knew that we were uh, uh, somebody. People are dicks. They actually pulled the flag out. They knew that we were digging in the back, not in the front. And you see the manhole out there. It also tells me that the drainage would come out to the front uh, for the sewer. And uh, it's really unfortunate when people pull those flags and throw them, toss them around because 
they have an important purpose to save a lot of money so uh, I will uh, let you go for a while and uh, we will chat again when uh, when I do the actual injection uh, of the uh, of the grout inside the wall, the expanding grout uh, for our crack right there and all our injection ports sticking out. Uh, I didn't have enough cement or mortar to do the uh, the old uh, rebar holes so I'm gonna pick up a, a different cement for that. And uh, anyways this has been Don Moody handymanreality.com have a great day. We'll see you in a little while. Coming back to uh, finish up on my uh, uh, crack repair of a basement wall. So I've uh, given it time for the mortar to uh, set and uh, uh, the uh, the adhesive I used for the uh, plugs to set and now before I mortared I uh, sprayed in the wall water which uh, would help to activate this grout but being that I have some uh, I guess you could say trust issues <laughs> what I also do is uh, I have uh, with me a little bottle that I use as a trick where I go through each one of these and I squeeze water into it and like I say what this is uh, what this will do is help to uh, activate the uh, the grout once it makes it inside the uh, inside the crack. Uh, there's kind of no use for the plugs at the moment. We might as well let atmosphere pressure into the wall to aid in the uh, uh, the filling of the crack. It's just peachy. It happens to be raining. Has some rain right now, but thankfully I'm under the eaves. And of course, by the time I've gotten everything lined up, uh, the dry time has uh, used up my daylight. One thing I noticed I missed earlier was is that I didn't uh, make enough space for the uh, mixing tube and the uh, uh, epoxy gun or caulking gun. Uh, this is the uh, uh, six, the Sika flexible polyurethane grout. So it's going to go in the bottom hole here. And I'm going to, once I fill the tube, With a couple of pumps. I'm going to give it two or three. Here, let's let you see it. it. Goes up the mixing tube. And you can see it mixing. It's getting closer to the end. Now it goes in there. Yeah. The idea is to give it two or three pumps and then a uh, little bit of patience. And the uh, theory being it will uh, start to either push the water or the, uh, it'll either push the water or the foam out the next uh, insert. Pissing right back at me. So 
we just go hole by hole? And uh, inject two or three pumps and then a little bit of patience. Being that it's kind of rainy out, I'm not as patient as I normally would be. Uh, this stuff works a lot like, uh, I don't know if you've ever used Gorilla Glue to repair wood. It's the same, uh, pretty much the same stuff, except this one has an activator or a hardening agent. Uh, one thing I noticed is, is that there actually is a Wheaton tile here, which is strange. Uh, except that it is a clay weeping tile. So I imagine over 10 or 20 years, it has uh, um, become uh, crushed in some places. It likely isn't, uh, uh, isn't functioning as well as it could. Apparently I didn't get a perfect seal with the grout on everything. That's kind of almost expected as well. 